Welcome to Now We Organize, where we organize against the satanic Illuminati New World Order system. And we do that with prayer and supplication and shine a light into this darkened world. In today's episode, I want to talk about the TV series Arrow. Currently, we're in... 2016 season 5 of the series, but I want to talk about season 4. In the comic book universe, a fanboy or a comic book fan looks for Easter eggs, uh, which is a line or something in the TV show or movie that points towards something else in the series or universe or whatever. So the the series is, is hinting at other things that's going to be happening in the series later on, in other words. I want to use this concept as uh, in cons- conspiracy investigator or truthers can use this uh, to find symbolism in the mainstream media. This series is about Oliver Queen, played by Stephen Amell, who is also the superhero Green Arrow. Oliver was a rich brat, stranded on an island that changed him into the person that you see him in the series, a vigilante. He works with a team of others to fight his crusade against the evil in the city, including uh, the secret black ops, government agents, hackers, and, and other people. But the overlying theme in Season 4 was magic. I want to have a 30-second Bible study on magic. All magic is bad. There is no white or black magic. There is no good or bad magic. All is bad. It's all indoctrination into the occult with the goal of desensitized people from this. You see this in Disney movies, Harry Potter, and superhero with their powers based on magic. And other examples, astrology, trinkets and charms, psychic readings, tarot cards, and Ouija boards. God's not trying to be mean, he's trying to keep us spiritually safe to prevent us from opening up portals of demonic influence and possession. I tell people that if you're not a vessel of the Holy Spirit, then willingly or unwillingly, knowingly or unknowingly, you are a vessel of demonic influences and forces. And also, those who do not believe in spiritual warfare will be a victim of it. At the beginning of the season, Oliver was living a happy life with his girlfriend, Felicity Smoke, played by Emily Bett Rickards. Star said he was in trouble, so that they went back to help rescue it. Oliver ends up running for mayor. And as we see here, we have Oliver Queen standing at the, at the podium with the, the emblem of the star here. And we'll find out later on that Star City should be renamed to Pentagram City. The nemesis of this season, his name is Damien Dark. He has magic powers... And he gets his powers uh, by stealing souls of victims. And right here he's stealing soul, the soul of uh, one of his henchmen called a ghost. And that's the source of his supernatural cultic power. And remember that all magic is bad. And he channels his energy through this idol. Notice the horns on it. First Samuel chapter 5 is when the Ark of the Covenant was stolen by the Philistines and what God did to the idol Dagon. God does not like idol worship at all. Later on in the season, a little bit later, uh, Damien Dark killed the Black Canary. The Black Canary is Laurel Lance and played by Katie Cassidy. Her sister, Sarah, was killed last season, dead and buried. So this is the rotting corpse of Sarah. And what we see down below is called the Lazarus Pit. And they're trying to bring her back to life. Sarah was was killed and is going to be resurrected in Raish al Ghul's Lazarus Pit in Season 4. Raish was the head of the League of Assassins and his nickname was the Demon's Head because he was so evil. Oliver's sister, Thea Queen, played by Willa Holland, was also resurrected here. The Lazarus Pit animates the body, but there is a disconnect between the body and the soul. They come out evil and they have a bloodlust and they want to kill. 
This is a direct reference of John chapter 11, verses 1 to 44, when Jesus raised his friend Lazarus from the dead. After Laurel was killed, her father Quentin Lance, played by Paul Blackthorne, thought it was a good idea. Laurel could be resurrected there also, but he did find out that all the Lazarus pits of the world were destroyed and there was no coming back. This series also has island flashbacks when Oliver Queen was on the island for five years. And in this scene, we see that Oliver meets John Constantine, played by Matt Ryan, a superhero who uses magic to fight the occult. Constantine was on the island to look for a magical artifact. Next, we see this warning in the cave. They think it's a warning, but I don't know what the first symbol is and then the middle symbol is, but I could decipher this, 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 and this. These are runes. Rune magic, and this one talks about heritage of birth, land of birth. This one is water, power of renewal, dreams, fantasies. This one over here, that's also the Bluetooth logo. Birth, fertility, growth, new beginnings. And this last one over here is need, self-reliance, endurance, and survival. And we see this overlying theme is birth and rebirth, renewal. And we've seen a lot of that over over this year and over the summer. We've seen it in, in Freemasonry, Order Out of Chaos. And there will be a rebirth out of that. And we see the double-headed phoenix rising out of the ashes. We also see it in Carrie, uh, Katy Perry's video, Rise. And the theme of this seems to be... Uh, the birth of the Antichrist. But we see in this scene that Constantine has magical sigils of protection on his arm. I couldn't quite get what the, the sigils were of. Through the cave, he finally does find the magical artifact. It was the staff of scepter or something. And I was looking at this, at this item right here, and I was wondering, is that a symbol of Isis or what? If it's a symbol of Isis, this is what it reminded me of. And Isis with wings, Isis, uh, her preferred bird was the kite, the bird of prey. And a quote from the Wikipedia on the kite, Isis is said in the ancient Egyptian mythology to have taken the form of a kite in various situations in order to resurrect the dead. But when I look close up to this Artifact. This artifact is also the Grimoire, magical book of spells. It looks also like an owl, and an owl is sacred in many cultures, and it represents the goddess of wisdom, the uh, Roman goddess Minerva, or the Greek goddess Athena, and the messenger of secrets. And the owl is connected to the sorcerer, and we see the owls are in the Harry Potter series. Another place where we see the owl is the Bohemian Grove, where they conduct r ritual sacrifices. But later on in the episode, Sarah was resurrected and Constantine is going to restore her soul to her by the use of this magic circle. These are the symbols from the rune board. And we also know that the New World Order symbolizes, symbolized by a triangle in a circle, usually with a dot in the middle. And that's probably the dot right there. Remember this, the magic staff grimoire with the bird is either Isis or the owl. If it's Isis, it's the bird of resurrection, and if it's the owl, it's to guide to and through the underworld. John Constantine had his own TV show, which only lasted one season, and there was a website that tracked all of his magical spells in each episode. And we see from, from these things how demonic that that series in itself it is. Eye of Horus, we recognize that. We recognize the rune magic over here, Triangle of Solomon. Versifer, I don't really know what that is yet. Banishing, demon banishing, spell, more spellcraft, sigils, all that stuff. It's all demonic. All magic is, is demonic. It's all evil. Later on in the season, episode 415, that is season 4, episode 15, we meet a new character named Vixen. Vixen is played by Megalyn E.K., short for Eschik Hoonwoke, something like that. And she was called to fight Damien Dark because 
to kidnap Oliver's son. Her magic power is to channel the energy of animal spirits. So she basically has an animal spirit surrounding her to fight uh, the bad guys. This is her in action. And we see the formation of the, the animal spirit. We know that in the occult uh, they have the animal spirit guides as well. And in this scene she becomes a gorilla. But Damien Dr. Power is too powerful and then he throws her across the room. Next we see a magic map of the city. And we see the, the, the pentagrams here and here. And now we know why it's called Star City. This map is of the ley lines. And the ley lines, according to this episode, is like Wi-Fi of magical conduits. So Oliver, later on, he wants to learn how to fight magic with magic. So Constantine told him to go to this casino and meet the shaman. Don't know what this shaman looks like. So he gambles until until they meet the shaman. We find out that this woman here in the middle here, uh, she is the shaman. They take their... take. Felicity and Oliver through this portal into this magic cave with a secret chamber. And this is another demon idol, but it doesn't have horns, so it must be a good demon god. But notice the, the triangles and the dot in the middle, and what, what I was saying earlier to represent uh, the New World Order. I don't know whether these idols were made up just for this episode, or whether they are actually replicas of... Uh, real idols. But that would be interesting to research as well. So Oliver and the shaman uh, try to fight. She unleashes a sample of black magic and he's supposed to unleash white magic to fight off the black magic, but she decided that she can't teach him because he has a lot of uh, dark energy from his experience on the island. Oliver had too much energy from the island experience and it was hard for him to teach. And that's this talisman around her neck and we see the uh, the circle and we have a triangular shape there i don't know specifically what this is also kind of hard to zoom in and also note that alistair crowley used lots of triangles in magic circles uh, for his demonic magic as well thea played by willa holland was on this getaway with her boyfriend and whom she slept with the night before and she found herself drug to get there and under these mind control pills. Damien Dark catches up with Lila Michaels, who is Diggle's wife. Lila is played by Audrey Marie Anderson, and she has this chip implant, which is a Rubicon microchip, to control nuclear weapons. She thought it was safe if she could hide things under her skin. And I think that this is a predictive programming for the RFID chip, and we know that that is in Revelation chapter 13, The Mark of the Beast. And Damien Dark tries to steal Oliver's soul, but he was taught magic, so he fights back. He remember the positive energy he got from Felicity. Lila comes to the team and she says that, the, that her implant was stolen. And so they were wondering why. They were sitting around the table wondering why they would need this, this Rubicon. And so they mentioned the flood in Genesis. So this is Damien Dark's version of the Flood to destroy the planet and start over again. The Flood is in uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 9 to chapter 9, verse 17. And at the end of this episode, Thea runs from these military guys and she hits a wall and the holographic wall knocks her back and she discovers that she is in an underground bunker. If you want to know more about uh, the reality of underground bunkers. Just type in doomsday bunkers for billionaires. There are bunkers that can house people with money just in case there is a nuclear war or an upcoming World War Three. And look at this look at this symbolism here. It's the cube of Saturn. And in Revelation chapter six, verse fifteen, it's also interesting to note that and the, the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in dens and in the rocks of the mountains. So we see that come to pass. Saturn's cube, Satan worship, also traces back to Aleister Crowley. This is in 1910, 
conducting the rite of Saturn. The Brotherhood of Saturn is also noted with the triangle in a circle with the astrological sign of Saturn. And in episode 421, we see this Russian soldier seeing warheads arming, more predictive programming, war against Russia. Thea's father, Malcolm Merlin, played by John Barrowman, says that the world is beyond saving. And we see that this, this theme this year from the movie The Purge, and we see uh, purging of all sorts of things. We see a clown purge as predicted for Halloween. It's also part of Agenda 2030 depopulation. And we see chaos and nuclear war themes coming through this. Damien Dark and more cube symbolism and his two henchmen in the back. And if you cross him, look at the guy on the left. Just have your lips sewn shut. Thea's boyfriend is under mind control. The boyfriend, played by Parker Young, is under mind control and helps cause of the underground. I've seen him there with the clipboard and he's checking people in. Another flashback scene. This guy's character name is Baron Ryder and he's possessed by the idol, Black Magic. So the idol is stolen by Tiana and she gets possessed by the idol. Tiana is played by Alicia Rotaru. Nuclear weapons were launched at Star City. Felicity, which is an expert hacker, uh, she couldn't stop the missile, but she could divert it. And she diverted it to this small town of 10,000, and 10,000 people died. And because of all that death, 10,000 souls were lost. Damien Dark, in the Nexus Chamber, he harnessed that energy to fuel his black magic. Damien Dark said that he's still human, but better. And this is an attempt for man to become God. Dark through black magic, but um, the other theme of transhumanism, the transhumanism agenda is becoming post-human or a human god. And in episode 422, Oliver does discover the bunker. Oliver and Diggle, his, his superhero name is Spartan. And this is Felicity's apartment. She's arguing with her mother there. And I couldn't figure out why this giant Jack was on her desk. I know that uh, Jack are kids' toys. These were the old-fashioned kids' toys before technology took over. Then I found out that it was the symbol of chaos magic. Chaos magic, 1976, in the 70s, and it has some sort of influence back to Crowley. Seems like a, a lot of black magic. Either has influence from Crowley or Albert Pike in some way, shape, or form. All demonic. So back to the bunker. This little utopia, people walking around with smiles on their face, they're under nice mind control, and they're in their uniforms. They have this family watching the television under mind control. They're listening to the news in the bunker about Arrow and Spartan on the loose. But Oliver just wanted to pick up his sister, and she's under mind control and draws a gun on it. All hell breaks loose. Things are going crazy. There's someone that took over the, uh, the bunkers. Uh, energy system and it's going to blow up the bunker. But I also thought it was interesting. Oh, numerology is very significant to Satanists and the elites. Same thing. So here we add these together. 3 plus 7 plus 0 plus 1 comes up with 11. Going back to Alistair Crowley in his book of the law. And it says, my number is 11. All of the numbers as all their numbers who are of us. Five-pointed star with a circle in the middle, and the circle is red. My color is black to the blind, but the blue and the gold are seen of the seeing. Also, I have a secret glory for them that love me. And that comes from one of his books. And if you go to Daniel chapter 7 verse 10 it says i consider the the horns and behold there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horn plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn there were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things so the eleventh horn of the ten horned beast the eleventh horn that rise, rises up is the antichrist in season three, the current season, I just found this screenshot to show you that uh, the numerology of 11 is symbolic. The Flash is another series 
which is sort of a, a spin-off from the TV series Arrow. So you see the number 11 there. Back to the TV series Arrow, you see this eye imagery, and it looks like some sort of portal. This could be like, it looks like an eye of a beast of some sort, and we see the slit. And we see the lightning come out of it. And, uh, the lightning representing Lucifer. Lucifer falling as lightning. Here is the hacker who was hired by Damien Dark to combat uh, Felicity's hacking skills. Felicity's ex-boyfriend from college, Cooper Selden, played by Nolan Gerard Funk, who is also a, a, a Glee veteran, at least we know he can sing, who was quoting a line from Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. The Undiscovered Country was a movie about how uncertain the future is. Back to the bunker, Green Arrow and Spartan were going into different houses, trying to figure out a way to get uh, his sister Thea out, and I looked in the background on the Easter egg. I saw this shape, triangle, representing of, of the Illuminati pyramid and the all-seeing eye. Either that or wishbone. Looks like a wishbone, but I would probably say it represents the, the triangle and the all-seeing eye. But the guy who took over the bunker finally destroyed it, and there is a crater right in the middle of Star City. You see that Ryder, this is an island flashback, Ryder, so Ryder is possessed by the demon, and so is Tiana, and they're supposed to have this big fight out with, with uh, black magic power, but he may have the extra edge since he has all these magical sigils and symbols on engraved into his arm. More predictive programming, nuclear attack. Writing also, predictive programming. You see the chaos, the purging. But Oliver jumps on top of the, the cab and he gives this inspirational speech and fills them all with positive energy. So then Oliver, as the Green Arrow, has enough positive energy to fight Damien Dark. And now at the end of this episode, Damien Dark is defeated. They all live happily ever after. And Oliver becomes mayor of Star City. And he takes the oath on the Bible. And we see... We will see how this goes in Season 5 as he balances his secret life of the Green Arrow and the Mayor of Pinnacle City. We saw magic of all sorts, and we saw how we are conditioned to believe that it can, that it can be used for good or evil. And we see that the God of the Bible is mocked in stories of the Flood. We see, we see chaos magic and purging symbolism throughout. And we also see order out of chaos. And all these things are predictive programming of, of things that we do see today. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, leave comments below, stay strong in your faith, and may you be blessed in all things.